Hang on, I'm gonna sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, hang on, I gotta turn the screen. Uh, okay, now I see what I'm doing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 127 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, uh, and finally, we've set up the podcast zone. I hope this sounds good. Uh, as always, please do let me know if this sounds good, if it sounds bad. Uh, I want to hear your feedback because I want to make this thing as good as it can possibly be. So I'm in the new podcast zone. It's all set up. As you can see, we've built a a fucking podcast arm for me now, which is great uh, because before I had to do it on the desk and that was a fuck around. And now I just got my dad in and he just, I was like, hey, dad, can you build me something? Because my dad's a carpenter, right? I'm like, hey, dad, can you build me something like that I can attach the the podcast arm too because the thing with this podcast arm is it it's got a clamp on the bottom of it right and uh the fucking thing i mean a clamp to me closes all the way like a clamp you know a clamp to me is a clamp but the fucking thing they gave me they were like oh yeah this so this is like a, a clamp but it only goes halfway closed so if you try and stick it on anything too thin it just won't work at all so that fucked me up and it would only connect to the desk, and then I had to do it at the desk for a couple of weeks, and then I was like, fuck it, I'll just go back to the old gear, uh, like normal. But now, uh, I, I got my dad, and I was like, hey man, hey dad, I, I don't call my dad man, hey man, hey, what's up dude? Like, we don't, I don't, we don't talk like that. I was like, hey dad, can you build me something that will, that is thick enough for the fucking clamp? So he goes, yeah, sure, no worries. And what he does, I don't, can't even see what he's doing. What he's done is he's drilled the piece of wood, he just bought a piece of wood from fucking Bunnings and he drilled it into the fucking floor and then he attached a metal bracket to that and then I'm pretty sure, even though I told him that it needs to be quite thick, he forgot that because he's my dad and he's related to me and that means if you've got Spears jeans in you, you're a fucking idiot. You can do everything really well except remember the most important part of the project, which is that it needs to be thick. So he's put this fucking bracket on there, right? And it's not thick enough. And I've just noticed this now starting the podcast. Instead of attaching a really thick bracket, what he's done is he's just fucking wrapped it with duct tape about a hundred times so that it's become thick enough for the clamp to work. And you know what? It works. I swear, that's that's where I get it from, man. I reckon 70% of my day is spent fixing up stupid mistakes that I made in the other 30% of the day. I would be so efficient. Do you know today I'm with the I'm with the editor in the warehouse and today I think we spent about 40% of the day looking for my keys because I realized that I arrived at the warehouse without the keys and I was like fuck and I don't drive. So I had to get the poor cunt to fucking drive me back to my house. We only got into the warehouse because thank fuck the owner was here and he let me in. Uh and then I was like oh don't worry we'll just go back to the warehouse we'll get my keys. Uh, and then we'll come back. So anyway, we drive all the way to my house. We go to go. We get there, and I look for about twenty minutes. Can't find my fucking keys. I don't know where they are. I got no. <laughs> I got no idea. And you know what? I reckon if we didn't spend about two hours, we would have finished a video by now, and you guys would be all watching it. But uh, instead, uh, I went on. I went on a doomed mission to find my fucking keys, and I don't know where they are. And now I'm freaking out because if I have actually lost my keys. Uh, they're, they're special security lock keys, meaning if you have to get them recut, you can't get them recut. A locksmith is like, it's illegal for a locksmith to make these because they're special security keys. So what has to happen instead of me replacing my keys, he instead has to replace the lock and get 17 keys for all the other cunts who have keys here. And that's, and now I have to pay for that, which is fair enough because it would be my fault. And then that would cost me about a thousand dollars. So if I don't find my keys, I'm fucked. Although my girl still has the keys, so I reckon I'm just going to steal hers. And then she'll be like, oh, you need to find your keys. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'll just take your keys. I mean, they're my keys at the end of the day. Sounds funny now, but I'm fucking... And they are they got my house keys on it too. Someone's going to find it, come in and rape my whole family. Although that'd be a really big effort, raping four people. Because you'd have to do it, because I reckon if someone if someone broke into my house to try and rape my whole family, I reckon we could take him down if we work together. But the, but but I also feel like if it was just like one dude, it, if it was one-on-one, I reckon he could rape me. But if it was like 
two on one, I, rec- I reckon that we could rape him back. You know what I mean? Like we could get him out. So I think that if someone was, if someone found my keys and they decided, right, I'm gonna rape Lewis's whole family, they'd have to be real, really stealthy. You know, like they'd have to, they'd have to start with me, because <laughs> I sleep alone. They'd have to climb in my window and take me out. Right, that's one down. Then they go and they take down my brother. But the real hard bit would be taking down my dad without waking up mum because they sleep, <laughs> they sleep in the same bed. So, I don't know, man. What I'm saying is, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get raped, but mum and dad will be fine. Unless, unless you know, mum wakes up and then decides to join in. But really, that's not, that's not a rape thing. That's more of a threesome scenario. So, I, I, don't, I don't think it's possible. How did we get from here from I've lost my keys? <laughs> what am I talking about? Yeah, I, I, I went on a, um, I went on a bit of a retreat. I'm getting on my fucking podcast notes here. What did I want to talk about? Jeez. How to rape my whole family is definitely not in the podcast notes. Um, I, <laughs> I went to, oh dude, I had to, I got a new youth. You thought I was done. I thought I was done with the Apple store, man. I thought I was fucking done. I got, I got my new phone and then I had two phones for a little bit and that was fun. Uh, but now I, I, my other phone works and I'm back down to one phone, uh, which isn't as exciting to say. Like I really, I really feel like if two change was called one chain, I don't think he would have made it because it's, (laughs) because that's not a very cool name, is it? One chain. Yeah, dude, everyone's got one chain. Um, yeah, I thought I was done with the fucking Apple store after I had to replace my phone. But what happened was, uh, I get my phone, right? And then they sent me a broken one. So I went to the Apple store and then I replaced it and they sent me that one and it works and it's great. That's fine. Awesome. Sweet. But then, fucking immediately after I just think I'm finished with the Apple store for the next four years... Uh, my computer dies. My laptop just died. It doesn't, it doesn't turn on unless it's plugged into the charger. I don't know what the fuck's wrong with it. I mean, it's older than my phone, I think. So I'm pretty sure that that's the issue is that it's just fucking really old and they build them to die. Thanks, Apple. Um, so yeah, my laptop fucking dies. So then I have to go and it died while we were doing all of the shipping. So I had like three people in the fucking warehouse shipping out t-shirts using that laptop. And all the while, I couldn't write. I couldn't do any videos or anything like that because they're using my fucking laptop. So then it dies and I'm like, shit, well, I need to buy a new one today. So I go to the fucking Apple store. No, that's right. I didn't want to go to the Apple store. I'm like, oh, I'll just buy it online. Surely, with the amount that you're spending on a fucking laptop, they're like, they're like fucking $3,000 at minimum. I'm like, oh, surely they'll deliver it today. No, they didn't. So I had to go online and then I'm like, oh, well, that's all right. I'll just, I'll just do pickup. So I, I fucking buy the laptop. Um, and I almost, I almost gouged my own eyes out when I saw the fucking price of the thing, because I wanted, because the problem with my old laptop was, I got the really, I got the basic model, because I'm like, oh, that'll save me a little bit of money, but the basic model only had like 250 gigs of space on it, and when you're editing video, that's fuck all, it would keep running out, and then you have to go and delete stuff, and then I'm, I'm an idiot when it comes to file management, my desktop, you couldn't even see the fucking background on the thing, my, my desktop just looked like it was tiled, um, with all the other shit, Oh, hang on. Someone's coming today. I need to keep my phone on me. Fucking. So I'm very distracted this podcast, talking about my, my family getting raped and then I'm talking about looking at my phone. Um, yeah, so, I, so I, I'm like, all right, well then I'm not going to make the same mistake twice. I'm going to get the fucking better version of it. So I get the, the version with a terabyte of storage on it and like a better processor and, and, and 32 gigs of RAM, like just a fucking spaceship. I'm like, and I was, every time I clicked add and I saw the price increase, I was like, fuck. But I I need it, you know, it's my tools. I'm running a a fairly low cost operation. I mean, that's a lie. The rent here is insane. Oh, I'm mad now. See, I just thought about how much, how much, how much money I gave Apple. And I think, I think I've given more money to fucking Apple than I've given to myself in the past year. Um, (laughs) 
Anyway, so I buy the fucking thing and then uh, I, I organize it for pickup at Chadston. And if you don't know, Chadston is the biggest shopping center in Australia, which is, is like, it's, it's bad enough going to the Apple store, but going to Chadston and having to move through there. And, and Chadston, I always get PTSD flashbacks walking through the food court because that's where that fucking retard took his pants off and called me Liam. And that's not a, that's not a memory I like to relive. Every time I walk past the Maccas, I think about that dickhead with his nutsack out calling me Liam. And calling himself the inspiration. Oh, are you, man? Is that what they call you? Fucking idiot. Um, so anyway, I organize it to be picked up. I'm like, click, click and collect, please. And they go, sure. It says that it's at Chadston. I've got about two hours to pick up this thing before I have to be somewhere else. So I'm like, all right, it'll be ready by then. It says that it's there. It literally says that it's there on the website. Um... So I do that. Oh, Keely, you don't have to worry about being fucking quiet. The microphone can't pick up anything you're doing. E- Editor Keel is tiptoeing around like a fucking ballerina. Don't worry about it, man. This mic- That's why I got this microphone, so I could yell and you could do shipping and it doesn't matter. Um, what am I talking about? Oh, the fucking... Yeah, so I'm like, okay, I'll pick it up from the Apple store in Chadston. And uh, it says that it's there. It says that it's in stock. So I'm like, all right, I'll just buy it and then I'll go there. And then I buy it and then it goes, all right, your order will be ready between uh, two to four hours. I'm like, two to four hours for fucking what? I saw on the website that it was there and they said they would text me when it would be ready. I'm like, it's fucking there. I can see it. That's why I bought it. You told me it was there. But it said two to four hours. And then they're like, oh, we'll text you when it's ready. And I was like, oh, no, you fucking won't. I already know that that store is going to be full of about 50 people in blue shirts walking around doing fucking nothing, not checking their phone and not texting me. So anyway, two hours later, I've got no text and I need to leave. Radio Mike was with me and he's fucking stressing out. He's bored alone having a panic attack because that's his hobby is having fucking panic attacks, apparently. So he's like, oh, I need to go. He had to go to yoga or something lame. He's like, oh, I need to go. I need to go. I need to go to yoga. And really, this all, this whole problem is brought upon my on me because I don't have my fucking license because I'm 24 and an idiot. Uh, so I just get my mates to drive me around like a leech. Nah, not even a leech would do that. I feel like a leech... I, I mean, he's sucking blood, but he at least has some fucking... Like, there's some health properties to that. You know what I mean? Like, if you get a leech on you and it sucks some of your blood out, at least it's only going to eat, like, the, the, the infected parts of your skin and you're going to come out of the whole process a lot healthier. When I get in my friend's car, they just waste their own petrol and end up hating me and I lose respect for myself. So no one gets anything out of it. <laughs> so I get... So anyway, two hours have gone by, they haven't fucking called me. So I call the Apple store and it rings for ages. And the whole time I'm just imagining... What, what the fucking cunts are doing? Probably talking about green text bubbles and feeling superior instead of answering the phone like they should be. So, and I call the store, and I'm calling Chadston, right? Apple Chadston. And it's like, thank you for calling Apple Chadston. Why the fuck does a retail store have a robot answering the phone? Anyway, I had to wait on hold, because evidently the fucking idiots are too busy changing the background back to normal after dickheads change it to pictures of their mates' YouTube videos. Or selfies that they took on the fucking Apple computer. Whatever, I don't even know what I'm saying. Anyway, I get on the phone and I'm like, hey, they answer, I'm like, hey, welcome to Apple, how can I help you? I'm like, hey, genius, listen here. (laughs) <laughs> I bought a fucking laptop two hours ago. It said it was in stock and I want to pick it up. Where Where is it? And he's like, oh, um, look, man, normally you, you have to wait for the text to, to let you know whether it's in stock. And I said, no, no, no. I bought it because it was in stock. I saw that it was in stock. Can't you just check the shelf? And he's like, no, nah, I don't think I can check it. Um, what you're going to do, man, is you have to wait for the text. And I said, uh, when do they uh, send the text? And he goes, oh, when someone's checked to see if it's there. And I was like, well, then why don't you do that now and tell me over the phone, dickhead? So I tell him to check and he's like, no, you have to wait for the text. And I was like, fine, I'll wait for the fucking text. I literally asked him, I'm like, oh, can't you get in the storeroom? And he goes, no, no, we can. It's just you have to wait for the text. I was like, all right, thanks, you fucking genius. I swear to God, Apple calling their employees geniuses 
has made me every time I hear the word genius, I just think fuckhead, fuckhead, dumb shirt. That's what I think now. Oh, he's got a genius IQ. Oh, really? Does he work in a fucking utopian paradise and laugh at green text bubbles? No, he's a fucking idiot. So anyway, an hour after that, Mike's having a panic attack in the fucking fetal position in my warehouse, thinking that he's going to be late to yoga, even though he doesn't have to be there for two hours. I get, a, I get a text from Apple, and it goes, Hey, your thing's ready for pickup. And I'm like, great. I bet it hasn't moved. I bet it's been in the fucking storeroom that whole time. So we go, all right, let's go to Chad's. Then we drive there. Um... We get there and we walk in to the Apple store in Chadson. And I think it must have been one of the newest ones they've built. Because that thing, that fucking store. Have you seen iRobot? Where it's like a utopia. You know iRobot when they walk into the fucking robot machine HQ. And there's like white walls everywhere and weird sculptures and all that kind of shit. That's what the Apple store looked like. It's like how unself aware are they? That they, it looks like they've modeled their store over like a, a movie that starts out as a utopia. You know those ones where everything's really perfect and this business has saved the world and everything's really great and amazing. And then fucking two, three quarters in the movie, you find out that they, they created the renewable energy by keeping, by keeping like Asian people locked in cages or something fucked up. I mean, that's that's what Apple saw that and was like, oh yeah, let's do that. I mean, that's fucking basically what it is. That is that is what it is. Apple Apple presents this utopia, but in reality, they're fueled by Asian kids locked in cages and making iPhones. <laughs> That'd be a movie I wouldn't need to see because it's fucking happening. I get to the Apple store and it's like, it's it's so big. Like, way too big. It was so big that they had a fucking desk of like 60-year-old people learning how to use their fucking iPads, and there was this dude standing at the head of the table with a with a microphone attached to his face, and he was telling everyone how to use their fucking iPad. And he was like, and this is how you edit photos, and this is really cool because you can fix red eye. And I, you can just see all of these seniors going, I don't... I'm never going to use this fucking feature in my life. I just want to know how to use WhatsApp so I can talk to my fucking son who's traveling. Tell me how to do that so I can leave. Just see the confusion on their faces. And anyway, so I walk in and there's no signs anywhere because it's utopia. There's no signs. You can't tell what pickup is. You can't tell who's there for repairs and who's there for what, whatever, right? So I just walk up to the first chick I see. And I notice that all the, all the store, I'm like, they're not re- wearing blue shirts. They're wearing red shirts. So they're the red shirt cunt store now. And someone told me after I talked about this last week that they're the most ironic shit ever. They're wearing red shirts for AIDS. <laughs> so they're the fucking AIDS shirt cunt store now. So I get in and I walk, I walk up to the first chick I see. She's wearing a fucking red shirt. She's got AIDS. I'm like, sweet. This is the retard I need to speak to. Genius. Sorry. And I'm like, hey, I'm here to pick up a laptop. And she's like, oh, you are? Okay, great. Can you show me your receipt? So I pull out my fucking receipt and I show it to her and she scans it. She goes, mm, it's not working. I'm like, oh, really? Isn't it? I'm fucking, what a surprise. She's like, mm, it's not working. And she does all these other things. She puts my name in. She puts my phone number in. I feel like I've given her my fucking birth certificate by the end of it and a semen sample just to pick up my fucking laptop. Uh, and then I get to the I, I get to like, fucking 15 minutes Mike has left because he's going hurry up man hurry up I'm like don't tell me tell this chick to hurry up I don't know I don't fucking own Apple if I did do you really think I'd be renting a warehouse next to a brothel no I'd be in the brothel enjoying my money (laughs) so he leaves so he can go to his fucking yoga Um, and he made it thank god because if he didn't make it that I would I wouldn't have heard the fucking last of it so after about 20 minutes of this chick going through the system, she goes, oh, I just can't find you in your system. When did you bring your laptop in to get repaired? And I was like, what did you say? She goes, when did you bring it in to get repaired? I'm like, I didn't get it repaired. I, I just bought one. I bought one and I'm here to pick it up. And she's like, oh, oh, sorry. I'm the pickup zone for things that are getting repaired. And I was like, oh, really? Where's the sign that says that? And she goes, oh, there's no signs. <laughs> I'm like, well, then why are you treating me like I'm an idiot when you're the fucking dickhead standing there with no signs, not clarifying why people are talking to you? 
So anyway, she she brings over the fucking person I'm supposed to talk to, and this dude comes over. And he's like, oh, you're Lewis. Yeah, an order came through. And I was like, oh, did, um, just out of curiosity, did the, did the laptop get delivered here? And he goes, oh, no, 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 it's been in the back room the whole time. I'm like, well, then why did I have to wait three hours for? It was in the whole back room the whole fucking time. I'm like, all right, whatever. And he br- he go and he goes out and he gets my laptop and he brings it brings it back, and it's all paid for, right? So I just want to pick it up. He knows that I've paid for it. I want to pick it up and I want to fucking leave. But he goes, "Oh, can you pull out your phone and give me the receipt?" I'm like, "Yes, yeah, wait, fair enough." So I give him the thing, and I let him scan it, and then he uh, and then he starts like selling me on the laptop, and he's like, "Man." You've got to... He starts nerding out on the... I think that most people at the Apple Store, they just buy, like, the base cheap version because not many people are doing what I'm doing where they're, like, you know, intensive fucking video processing and all that kind of shit. So he starts nerding out over the laptop that I've bought and he's like, man, man, you've got a beast. You've bought a beast, bro. I'm like, yeah, did I? He's like, yeah, man, the processor is this point something. You, you, you've got a beast, bro. It's really good. You got a beast, man. What do you do for work? I'm like, I'll tell you what I am. I'm a fucking, I'm a fucking lion. I'm a fucking beast. That's why I got it. That's why I got it. I hunt zebra, so I needed a fucking beast to help. What, what do you think? I don't care. Just give me my fucking laptop and let me leave. I don't want to talk to this cunt. He's like, bro, you got a beast, man. You got a beast. And the good thing about this man is you didn't just get the good processor. You also got the RAM to back it up. I'm like, I know. I paid for it. You don't need to tell me. You got 32 gigs of RAM, man. You got the fucking beast. <laughs> you got a beast, man. And he's like, yeah, man. So you got a good processor and you got uh, enough RAM to like handle everything. What do you do, man? Do you do like uh, video editing? I'm like, yeah, dude. He goes, oh, cool, man. What do you work on? I'm like, oh, I'm a comedian. And that's the, the uh, biggest mistake I ever made was telling some Apple fucking cunt from the store that I was a comedian. He goes, man, I love comedy. What kind of comedians do you like? What are you going to watch on The Beast? <laughs> and, I'm, and, and, and the thing that, that shits me is he's holding the laptop the whole time. So it's I, like if I was holding it, I would go, anyway, man. Anyway, thanks for your help, but I, gotta, I don't, I don't want to talk to you, man. I'm not a nice person. I want to leave. You're saying beast way too much, bro. And I want to leave. But he was holding it. He kept holding it. He was like, it was like he wanted to keep it. But I guess Apple weren't paying him enough. You got a beast, man. You're such a beast. And then I get trapped in this fucking 10 minute conversation about comedians with this cunt who can't stop talking about comedians and beast. He's like, what's your name, man? What's your name? When when I finish work, man, I'm going to like go home and Google you. Fucking hell. What's my name? I was like, my name's fucking Luke Kidgel. <laughs> um, so anyway, he finally fucking lets me get out of there. After he scans my, re- my receipt, he goes, I'm going to look you up, man. Lewis Spears, I'm going to look you up, man. Enjoy the computer, bro. It's fucking, it's a beast. And I was like, fuck, I hope you listen to this and realize how much of a dickhead you sound. Oh, that's rude. I'm sorry, man. I know. If you listen to this, I know. I'm sorry. You've been brainwashed by fucking Apple and you get a hard-on over computers. I'm sorry, but if you're calling a fucking Mac laptop a beast, you need to reassess your priorities. You got a beast, man. You got a beast. Yeah, and you need a hobby. So anyway, I, 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 I reckon... Um, Dude, I, for the fucking amount of... I, I, I realized it the other day. The amount of money I've spent on Apple products in the last two days, I literally, literally could have bought like an okay car. But instead, I've got a beast, man. And I've got two phones. Bro, could you imagine if I had two beasts? Man, that'd be the best. But I'm hoping that this will be the last time I ever go to the fucking Apple store until... The beast breaks down and my other phone breaks down. But you know what's fucking shit about the new... The new laptops is... uh, They don't have USB ports. Which, that's okay. I can get... I, I get that, right? 
USB-C, it's the future. Everyone's sick of putting their USB in the wrong way round and then turning it over and then trying it again and then realizing they had it right the first time, turning it over and then plugging it in. I hate that shit. USB-C works both directions. Great. That's a great upgrade. Whatever. The problem is, it doesn't have an SD card slot. And I can tell you, I bet for the next fucking decade, cameras are not going to use... I mean, what else are they going to use? You can't put a USB-C inside a fucking camera. That's not going to work. They're always going to use SD cards or something like that. So now, not only did I have to fucking spend an insane amount of money on the beast, man, I also had to buy some fucking... USB hub thing that I plug into the laptop and then plug my USB and my SD cards into. It's fucking insane. But, I've got it. And you know what? I'm an idiot, but I'm a smart idiot because I know how fucking dumb I am. I bought two of these USB hubs. I bought one for the warehouse and one for my backpack because I know I'm going to forget it. I mean, it's not going to help me if I rock up to the warehouse and out of my fucking keys, but at least I know... That there's a hub in there somewhere in case I want to fucking try and fling in the SD card through the window and land it in the USB hub. That option is available to me. How long are we going for? Can't fucking read it. What does that say? 26 minutes? Alright. Um, what else? Oh, I went to... I, I had a break, man. I really needed a fucking break from just doing shit. I went on... I went to, uh... Just to stay with some family, uh, some family own, own like a farm out in the middle of nowhere, like literally a farm in with cows and horses and shit, just in the middle of nowhere, no phone reception, hardly any internet, and I just went up there for like uh, a whole week just to finish off my uh, my show, which tickets are available for, loosebeers.com slash gigs, they're going really well. Uh, we just added an extra Melbourne show and an extra Perth show, Sydney only has, uh, I can't even remember how many Sydney has, but fuck all, um... Brisbane is going really well as well and looking at it once the Brisbane show sells out it'll probably be pretty early we're not going to add another one because that's one that one's in a fucking massive theater so if we added another one I wouldn't be able to fill it so if you miss out on Brisbane tickets it's not going to be like Melbourne and Perth where we added extra shows it'll just be fucking gone um anyway so grab your tickets loose because I'm so geeks uh I'm writing the show and uh and the the fucking place is such a it's, I get there and the family that I was staying with, every time I see them, they have weird animals. They've got a new animal. Uh, and like last time I was there, okay, so the, I'd say the first time I was there, they had 12 dogs, 12 dogs running around. It was like a fucking wolf pack. It was insane. I don't know how they fed them. They had 12 dogs. I think they, they, they ended up giving most of them away to like good families and stuff because they couldn't handle how many fucking dogs they had. Um, I get there this time, and oh, last time I was there, they had a dog that has no eyes. It's not not two blind eyes, like two holes in its head, no uh, no eyeballs, and the skin had grown over the fucking eye sockets. And the weirdest thing is, man, it's got hair in there. I thought it would have like scar tissue or something, but it's got hairy fucking eyeballs. It's weird as, and it walks around and it's completely blind. And it's an amazing dog. It can walk. It, it can walk everywhere. It like knows where it is based off sound and feel, and from um, just living blind most of its life. Um, and it's like a really happy dog too. Like they were when they when they found that they, it had to lose its eyes. It had something wrong with its eyes, and they had to get rid of them. And they were thinking about putting it down, but then they were like, "Oh, we'll give him like six months and see how she recovers." Uh, and uh, she just turned out to be really happy. And it's like the most amazing fucking thing ever, watching her walk around just using her nose. She doesn't bump into anything. Like, every now and then it does, but she's real confident and real happy. It's, it's, it's really cool to see. So, they, so last time I was there, they had a dog with, no, with fucking furry eyeballs that was completely blind. This time I get there, and they have a cross-eyed cat that just wouldn't let you touch it. If you touched it, it would fucking freak out and hit you. Probably because its eyes were so crossed, you probably looked three times bigger than you actually were, and like you had three hands every time you touched it. It was like a 4D experience, and it would just freak out. Be like, ah, oh, it feels like fucking Sharknado in here, and it'll just attack you. But the wildest thing was they had a, they also had a wombat. <laughs> they had a fucking 
wombat that they rescued because they found a dead wombat and then they checked it and it had a baby wombat with it. So they just adopted this wombat and took it into their house and it's fucking crazy how much of a pet the thing is. So they've had it for a couple of years now. Oh no, eight months. And it's like half grown and it's about as... It's, a, it's, like, a, it's like a medium-sized dog but really stocky and fucking really strong. And the funniest thing about the wombat is it just loves people. It would, it would like, it, it was like a dog man. It would jump up onto the couch and sit on my lap and make me scratch its belly. It was crazy. And the thing about the wombat is it, it can only see directly in front of it. It can't see up and it can't see behind it or to the side. It, it only sees like directly in front of it. And it was obsessed with shoelaces. And the thing about the wombat is, you know how dogs are expressive? Like, a, a dog will move its ears up if it's interested, or back if it's scared, or, like, crease its brow if it's interesting and trying to, interested in trying to work something out. It has, like, facial expressions. You can tell what a dog thinking. A wombat has none of that. You can't... You've got no idea what it's thinking. It just has the same face the whole time. Its ears don't move, and its eyes don't move at all, and it doesn't make any facial things unless it's eating something. So you have no idea what the fucking thing is thinking, and it's got no tail either. It's like a it's like a giant muscular rat that has no tail. And it was obsessed with shoelaces, like biting shoelaces and pulling on them. And I think it was playing with me, but every time it would come over and like it had run over and grab my shoelaces and just start pulling on them trying to undo them, and I would I would come and I'd put my, my hand around its head and then it would like do this thing where it would jump in the air and then run away really fast and then run and come back so I would do it again. It was the fucking weirdest thing how much of a, a pet it was and how used to, to humans it was. But the funniest thing about the fucking thing was that the, the dogs hated it. The dogs absolutely hated the fucking wombat because obviously they couldn't work out what it was thinking either because it had no body language. And the wombat would fuck with the dogs because the dogs were just like small. It was like a Jack Russell and then a small fluffy thing. And the wombat would intentionally, it was like a dominant thing. It would intentionally like walk past the dogs and then stare at the dogs, stay still. And the dogs knew what it was doing. Obviously it did this all the time. It would stay still and then it would just start slowly walking directly towards the dog. It was like that episode of The Simpsons where it's like, I'm going to kick like this. And if you get in the way, it's your own fault. The wombat did that. I'm going to walk directly into the dog. And if you get hurt, it's your own fault. And the dog knew that the wombat was doing this. And the dog was like, fuck you, man. I'm, I'm the alpha in this situation. You don't even kill things. I kill shit all the time. I caught a bird the other day. I'm standing my ground. But the wombat and the dog just wouldn't back down. And then the wombat would slowly walk into the dog. The dog would start growling. And then as soon as they touched, the dog would just bite the shit out of the wombat. But because the wombat was like, they're so tough. Like their fur is really thick. Their bones are so hard. The, the dog couldn't bite anything. So it would just like bang its teeth against the wombat. The wombat wouldn't even fucking feel it. And would just keep walking forwards until the dog would run away. And that was the dog that could see. The dog that had no eyes fucking hated the wombat like nothing I've ever seen. I don't know what you are, man, but you smell weird. Get the fuck out of my house. Like, I don't know what the blind dog thought. All of a sudden, this, this giant, weird-smelling dog that kept running into him. And the dogs ate the wombat's food. Like, the, the wombat ate sweet potato... And the blind dog obviously has a good nose because that's how it gets around. Would always find the fucking sweet potato, pull it out of the wombat's cage and then start eating it. And then the wombat would slowly walk towards the blind dog and the dog could smell that something was coming but it would face the wrong way and just start growling, tell him to fuck off. And then the wombat would walk into it from behind. The dog would freak out and just try and maul this wombat but the wombat wouldn't even feel it. And then the dog would back off and walk away. And then the wombat would come and try and fucking attack my shoelaces and I would almost stack it and hurt myself. It was fucking insane. 
It was just the most Australian shit ever. I, I rocked up to a farm and they had a dog with no eyes and a wombat. <laughs> um, what else is happening? But yeah, the uh, it, it was really good just to get away and get away from fucking technology and all the shit that's happening here at the moment. Like right now, we're still posting out uh, Death Threats Don't Scare Me merch. We're almost through it all. I think there's like 200 orders that need to go out. Uh, all of the international people, there's been a fucking delay because apparently Australia Post won't ship internationally, so we need to organize UPS. So all the international people, none of your stuff has been sent out. I'm sorry. My apologies for the delay. It's taken f fucking ages, but we're, we're sorting it out. So right now, all of the people that are living in like major cities and regional towns in Australia uh, have their merch, uh, and the only people who are really left are like those super regional people so regional regional areas and uh a few and anyone who has a po box as well that stuff's getting sent out over the next couple of days and then hopefully by next week we'll have all of the international orders out depending on how long ups takes to fucking integrate into the system but it's getting done that's the main fucking thing um what else do i want to talk about what have i written down here oh man they're fucking cleaner. So the the family that I stayed with, they've got a farm and then they have like... Uh, the reason why I could stay there is they have like a bed and breakfast thing. So they got like maybe six rooms or whatever. Um, so they've all obviously got cleaners to maintain all of the rooms. And uh, one day I'm sitting there and I've, I've got the fucking wombat on my lap and the blind dog eating sweet potato or some shit on the floor. <clears throat> and the cross-eyed cat telling me to fuck off and uh i'm sitting there we're just watching tv they're real they're, they're real right wing the family they're watching sky news talking about how fucking gender politics has taken over the world and everyone's trying to make you gay and all that kind of shit you know grandparent stuff <laughs> sitting there watching sky news talking about how the world's ending because everyone's going lefty and uh the cleaner comes in and she's like in a mad rush. She's just running around. She's really loud. And everything. She like bursts in the door. She's carrying a bucket and water's going everywhere. And she's just fucking yelling shit. She's real frantic. And she goes, oh, hello everyone. How you going? I'm just cleaning this. I'm going over here. I'm going over there. And fucking this and that. You know those bogan people that are just always in a rush? She was like that. And, uh... Anyway, she goes, oh, hello, you must be, uh, you must be whatever's, uh, niece. How you going? I'm Marie. Oh, I can't remember her name. I think, I'm Marie. How you going? And, uh, I'm like, oh, hey, uh, how are you? And then my family member, they go, oh, uh, Marie, this is Lewis. Lewis, this is Marie. And she goes, Lewis. Oh, no, I'm not gonna, I don't like that name. I, I don't like that name. That's the name of the cunt who killed my sister. <laughs> And I was, that's the first thing she says to me. She's like, no, I don't like that name. I'm not going to call you that. That's the name of the cunt who killed my sister. And I was like, whoa, what the fuck? He's like, I'm not going to call you Lewis. I'm going to call you, uh, I'm going to call you Lee Lee. Is that all right? Is that all right? And I was like, yeah, fucking call me Lee Lee. Whatever. Just don't kill me. And like that was, and that's, that's the only time I ever spoke to her was, oh, I hate, fucking hate that name. That's the name of the cunt who killed my sister. I was like, fuck me. This place is wild. Um, but despite all of that fucking noise, uh, it was actually really good to get away for a bit. Most, most of the time I was just spent in my room or sitting by the lake writing the, um, the most, the most horrendous jokes I could think of. Um, and the, the show's going really, really good. Um, we've actually going to do a trial show sometime next week. Uh, keep an eye on my Snapchat, my Insta. I think me and Luke are going to do like just a show for no reason again, like we do every year, just like maybe 50 people, probably 10 bucks or something a ticket. And we'll just go up there with notes and just run through all of the shit that we've written just to make sure that it's that it's good and it all works and it all flows properly before I take it on tour. <clears throat> um, so, I don't know, keep an eye on my Snapchat, my Insta and all that kind of shit. And uh, you'll be able to find out about it. But I'm excited for it. I think I think that just scrolling through and looking at the show now, uh, I think it's I've come up with some fucking really good shit. And uh, definitely... Man, I'm just so excited to get get out on tour again. It's been way too long, 18 months. But it kicks off in two weeks, uh, going to Geelong. That's Man, that's one podcast away after this one. 
will be the tour. I'm fucking so keen. Geelong is first up on the 14th, and then we're going to Bendigo on the 15th. Uh, Geelong's almost sold out. Uh, Bendigo has quite a few tickets left, so uh, make sure you grab them. I can't, and I'm meeting everyone afterwards at all the shows and all the dates and everything at lucespears.com slash gigs, as always. Um, right, guys. Uh, with that said, I think it's time to get into miscellaneous bit at the end, I reckon. Um, where are we? We've got to bang a couple of... We've had a fucking great run of miscellaneous bit at the end, and I, I think uh, this week is no exception. Where are we? I haven't read... I've read one of the emails... And I've read like the first sentence of one and I stopped reading it because I wanted to experience it for the first time on here. Because, uh, guys, we have uh, an update on... Uh, I, don't want you guys, I don't want you guys to lose your shit, but we've got an update from the diaper fetish guy. Uh, from memory, I, I believe... This is from an older episode, I can't remember. Um, but from memory, this guy found out Oh, that's right. It was, the, it was the episode that has me, Luke, and Radio Mike on it. I can't remember what number, but you'll be able, you'll be able to find it from the thumbnail on the podcast channel on YouTube. Um, and then listen to the audio version if you want. But this is this guy, uh, he started dating a girl and she had a diaper fetish. And what that was, was she wanted to shit in a diaper and then while she was wearing it, she wanted to shit and piss in a diaper and then... She wanted him to fuck her in it, in the diaper, with the shit and the piss. Like, straight up urinary tract infection sex. That's what she wanted. And and he was not into it at all. And so, of course, our advice was, Hey, man, run for your fucking life. You're going to lose your dick. Like, actually, that's actually how you can lose your dick. If you put your dick in, in shit and you get shit in your dick, they have to ch- they're going to chop it off fucking that's crazy um and that's where luke's famous catchphrase mark my words i will never come in a piss <laughs> came from so we've got an update from that guy he said that he actually did it uh and his mum ended up finding the diapers and he didn't know how to explain it that was his that it, that's it, that's right that's his, his question was how do i tell my mum about the diapers rather than how do i break up with this woman what a fucking idiot so anyway, he emails he emails me, and I've read the first sentence, but as soon as I realized it was him, I stopped. Um, hey, Lewis, uh, this is Tyler, uh, and this is a follow-up of a follow-up from a couple of months ago. I'm the diaper guy, and I figured that you, all the listeners, might be interested what happened to me and my ex-girlfriend's diaper fetish. Oh, so he broke up with her. Fucking thank you. She is no longer my girlfriend, and I no longer come in a piss, partially thanks to you and your comedy special. I can't believe that that's partially. I can't believe that you needed me to tell you for 20 minutes that you probably shouldn't stick your dick in shit before you realize, oh yeah, maybe I should find a fucking normal girl. Dude, you don't even need a normal girl. You can have someone with fucking no legs and daddy issues, and that'd still be way less weird than this shit. She's no longer my girlfriend, and I no longer come in a piss, partially thanks to you and your comedy special. Here's what happened. Last week, I invited her over to watch the special together. I pissed myself laughing at one-armed lesbians, and she pissed herself. Fuck, I hope not literally, because then you have to fuck her. (laughs) Fuck, I'm so funny. Um, Last Saturday night, I was at a mate sesh, I was at a mate sesh and she must have found your channel and stumbled across the podcast. She called me and me being a drunk idiot, I put her on speaker and told everyone to be quiet. She was angry and she she asked, why did you tell this Lewis Spears about the diapers? <laughs> oh no. Oh man, I gotta get Luke on. Oh, I'm gonna call him. Is he around? I haven't I don't wanna read the rest of it until I can get Luke. I'm gonna call him. If he doesn't answer, I'm just gonna edit this out. Alright, he didn't answer. Fuck him. I'm going to have to tell him the rest of it. Alright, I've forgotten where I'm up to. I didn't even read the fucking email. I wanted to experience it with one of my good friends, but he's fucking lost. Um, follow up from a couple of months ago. I'm the diaper guy. Coming to piss. Blah, blah. Watched my special. Found it funny. Last Saturday night, while I was at a mate sesh, she must have found your channel and stumbled across the podcast. 
She called me, and me being a drunk idiot, I put her on speaker and told everyone to be quiet. She was angry and asked, why did you tell that Lewis Spears about the diapers? <laughs> I went outside, me and her had a fight on the phone, and since it's no slide season, I politely told her to fuck off and find someone who wants to come and a piss for her. <laughs> uh, I returned back to the sesh, announced that I no longer had a girlfriend, and told my mates about the diapers. Needless to why would you tell your friends, you fucking idiot? Now you're going to be cum piss boy for the rest of your life. Needless to say, I was the target of more than a few jokes that night, but at least now I won't have to put it with her shit and her shit anymore. <laughs> Thanks, have a shit one. Oh, fuck, man. I'd say you too, but you've already had a very shit one, and then you had to fuck it. Oh, man, that's great. I'm glad you're out of that, man. You don't want to fucking deal with that shit. Dude. All right, um, last one before I wrap up the podcast. This one is a, a bit of a special one. Uh, this, I think this might be a podcast first for me, uh, and it's a very special one. So I'm going to give it the, the respect that I think it deserves. This email, uh, the header is, I want to test out the cuck special theory. Hey Lewis, it's Jermaine here again. I wrote to you a few podcasts back regarding your podcast costing me hours at work, which has all been sorted, thankfully. After the past three weeks of stories regarding people getting cucked for not watching your special, I've recently purchased the special and, te- and want to test out the theory um, as to whether it will help me get a partner. <clears throat> I'm going to watch the special with my partner of four years, both big fans of yours, on Wednesday. And I have plans to listen to the podcast on Sunday as per the norm. If it's okay with you, I would like to get this part on the podcast. Totally understand if you don't blah, blah, blah. Annie, uh, not a real name by the way. She'll know it's her though. For the past four years, you have made a fucking fantastic individual of me. I cannot imagine life without you. And I've had an incredibly important question to ask. I, of course, apologize that it's on the literal worst part of the podcast, but Annie, in front of Lewis's dozens of fans, will you marry this pathetic loser? Cheers, cunt. Looking forward to your tour and happy to update you on the response. Congratulations, if she said yes. This is the response, if she said yes. I, I, I hope she said yes. If not, if she said no, get out. Fuck off, alright? You watch the comedy special and you turn the man down. Get out of here! You don't deserve him. But if she said yes, congratulations and I wish you the best because um, I really do think involving miscellaneous bit at the end in your in your marriage is a, is a massive error. I mean, most people who listen to this bit kill themselves. I don't know if, if a marriage can end its life, but... I hopefully it doesn't, <laughs> and uh, I wish you all the best. Um, and that's a pretty cool thing to be a part of—a little proposal. Um, I mean, I don't know why. I, I, usually, you would say that instead of me, but hey, I'm happy to do it for you, man. That's what cucking is all about. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm ruining your special moment. Uh, best of luck to the two of you. Uh, I hope you fucking live happily ever after together. Uh, and if you don't, I told you you shouldn't have put in a miscellaneous bit at the end. All right, enjoy your fucking lives together. That's the end of the podcast, guys. Uh, and that might be the very first ever proposal uh, on on the Spirit Sunday. That is the, the first one, and uh, I don't know if it'll be the last one. But um, hey, you know what? After this milestone. I'm looking forward to the first divorce. <laughs> okay, I'm kidding. I wish you guys the best. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm grateful to be a part of your fucking special moment. It's pretty cool to be uh, a mutual interest of yours. Obviously, uh, my, I don't know. You guys must enjoy my shit if you're prepared to involve me in your marriage. Um, I just hope you don't try and involve me in the bedroom. All right, guys, that's the end. Thank you very much for listening. Grab your tickets to my tour at loosebeers.com slash gigs. I'm going all over Australia. Uh, we added extra shows in Melbourne and Perth because they sold out so quick. Brisbane's uh, and Sydney are the next ones that'll probably go, but all the other shows are packing out really quick, so make sure you get your tickets because it's only two weeks away. It's a brand new show, nothing from the comedy special, nothing from previous shows, and it's going to be very, very fucking great. So thanks for listening, and uh, I'll talk to you uh, 
next Sunday. Congratulations on the marriage, and I uh, hope you have a shit one. A shit one, not a shit marriage. All right, I'm. <laughs> see you later. <laughs>